welcome to week two of the Thanksgiving STEM challenges. Last week we worked on water transportation with Minnie Mayflower and Minnie Mishun. This week we're focusing on building shelter, and this one is called Protect the People. Before we go any further, let's take a second to check out the materials and the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You can click on the title now to see the cycle explained. One of the things that will be on your criteria and constraints list is a size requirement. So something that will help you with that is if you have little cutouts of the people that you'll be protecting with these shelters. Based on how big you want the shelters to be, that's how big you should make your people. Mine are about three inches tall. So you're going to ask the students to design a shelter that would keep people warm, dry, and safe. In order to make sure the shelters are warm, dry, and safe, we will be testing them against rain, wind, and snow. Students will need to make sure they build an entry so one or more people can in fact enter the shelter. And once the people are safe inside their shelters, that's when we're gonna go ahead and test them. For wind, you can either set up a fan, or if you have one of those little mini fans, uh, but make sure that it blows, you test it from 360 degrees around the shelter, and the shelter should remain in place. If you don't have a fan, you can always just use a straw. For rain, you can use a spray bottle or you can just take a piece of foil or plastic wrap and punch holes in it and just sprinkle. You can use an eyedropper, really anything. You can even have students design a rainmaker. The idea is if I were to spray at any point on the design, it would keep the people dry. If I take the people out and I find out that they're wet, then my design has failed. So safety in this challenge is really measured by whether or not the structure is strong enough to resist collapse if it snows, as it often does in New England. You can test this by putting any kind of weights on top of the structure. Uh, one easy thing to do is just get some water bottles or soda cans or whatever. Success! So just in case you were curious about what this one looks like, um, it's like a basically a little cave and it is a little bit light, but it did withstand the wind test. I feel pretty confident it's gonna withstand the rain test. I'm not sure about the snow test. Okay, so this one actually withstands it as well. And just like you saw me kind of working and fiddling and trying to find a place where I could put the water bottle, um, you can decide whether or not to allow the students to do that or not. With younger students, I would absolutely let them do it that way. And as long as they found any structure, any point on the structure where the water bottle would hold, it's successful against snow. With older students, I would require that they test for the strength of the structure in at least two different places, and they could record their results as a, you know, two out of two successful, one out of two, or zero out of two. Now, you might be tempted to test the structures until the failure point, just like we did with Minnie Mayflower last week. Um, I'm gonna recommend against that this time. I did do a video a couple weeks back that was about whether or not all STEM challenges should be competitions, um, and, the short answer is no. Um, I will link it up above if you want to take a look at that. But basically my feeling is some, some challenges should just be did you meet the criteria and there can be many successful structures. So that's what we're looking for in this case. Choose whatever your weight point is and use the same weight on each structure and it's really a yes or no. Did the structure withstand that weight? Yes or no? You don't need to make sure that all of the shelters collapse at the end of this one. The thing that you can do if you're looking to increase the difficulty for older students is to give them soft materials and very few rigid materials. So I wouldn't give older students popsicle sticks if I was really trying to challenge them. Um, it definitely makes it a lot more difficult to withstand the weight test if you have nothing but uh, malleable materials to work with, but it can be done. You can also increase the number of pilgrims or Wampanoag people that have to fit inside the structures or have students create a way to stand up the people inside in order to increase difficulty. For extensions on this, I would have students research what they actually made their homes from in the 1600s. Then from a science perspective, I would have them use this as an opportunity to explore physical properties of matter and identify the physical properties of the materials they used in their designs, as well as maybe some of the physical properties of materials they would want to use in their next iteration of the designs, or that the Wampanoag people and pilgrims actually did use when they built their homes in the 1600s. So you have the basics and you're ready to do this on your own in your classroom, but if you're looking for more than just the basics, let's say you want student handouts, more modifications, 
more cross-curricular connections, you need to check out the resource. This resource contains everything you need to guide your students through the Protect the People Challenge, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. You'll get the Protect the People materials list and an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. You'll find a video walkthrough so you can quickly understand what to expect from the challenge and links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from every STEM challenge. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. For design analysis, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions and Pilgrim and Wampanoag cutouts in historically accurate dress. Students use the cutouts to test how their shelters protect the people. In the extension handouts, you'll find an identifying physical properties handout, plus math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Thanksgiving and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Paperless versions for use with Google Slides are also available. Links can be found in the description below the video. I get a lot of really great feedback on this challenge, and I've gotten it from first grade teachers all the way up through high school, SDC, middle school, everything in between. Be sure you like and subscribe. Next week, we'll be back with Pumpkin Picker. See you next time.